Generally, if a hip fracture is suspected, the patient should have an x-ray of their pelvis as well as the affected hip. With a good pelvis x-ray, you should be able to see from above the iliac crests to about one third of the way along the femoral shaft. You should also be able to trace the three rings, which are the main pelvic ring and the two obturator rings. They should all be smooth and any irregularities may be suggestive of a pelvic fracture. Then you should turn your attention to the hips and trace Shenton's lines. This is an imaginary line that goes along the medial border of the neck of the femur and then along the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus. And this line should be smooth and any disruption may be suggestive of a fracture. Neck of femur fractures are described based on the location of the fracture. A subcapital fracture occurs at the junction between the head and neck of the femur. A transcervical fracture occurs through the neck of the femur. Basicervical fractures occur at the base of the neck of the femur and intertrochanteric fractures occur between the trochanters. A fracture that occurs below the level of the trochanters is described as being subtrochanteric. There's a fibrous capsule that encases and reinforces the hip joint. Subcapital and transcervical fractures are intracapsular, whereas the other forms of fracture are considered extracapsular. Here are some real life examples of different types of hip fracture. The subcapital fracture is subtle, but you can see a little notch that disrupts Shenton's line at the junction between the head and neck of the femur. This is a transcervical fracture that goes through the neck of the femur, and on the right is a basi cervical fracture. And finally, here's an example of an intertrochanteric fracture and a subtrochanteric fracture.